María Mirabé. Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Whitney and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Tenille. I'm Whitney and today we are taking a look at Maria Mirabella. Mirabella. It is a Moldova film slash Soismult film. Uh, work together thingy, my blob. They did... A collaboration. Yeah, that's the word. So, uh, Moldova film is from Romania, and so his mold film is from Soviet Union. Yep. And I want to say thank you to Tao for finding this movie for us. Mm. They were able to find this movie with subtitles so that we could watch it. Thank you very much. Uh, so this film is a mix of live action and animation, and our two titular characters here are played by children. So, <laughs> I already kind of have to go into this one with pretty low expectations. Yeah. Okay, so, because we have two child actors who are, like, ten. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, they're, they or are younger. children. Yeah. They are obviously children. They act like children. They have the mannerisms of children. They are dubbed by adult women. <laughs> well, and like, their acting is on the par of like, you can tell the director told them to do this emotion. Mm -hmm. And so the kid is like, they do it once really quick and then they move on to the next one because mm -hmm. like, they don't remember, like, like they're just trying to remember all their cues. Yeah. Like... Like, that's the kind of child acting we're talking about here. <laughs> like, I, I don't think they did a bad job. No, but they're kids, Yeah, you know? so it, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It is okay <laughs> acting. And then past that, we're interacting with a bunch of small cartoon animals. Yeah. To be, like, their compatriots, their, their traveling buddies. Yeah. How about we get into a plot synopsis? Go for it. So, we start with a frog, a firefly, and a butterfly reminiscing about how they first met Maria and Mirabella, mm -hmm. who are two sisters. Mm -hmm. And so we start with the... Frog? The frog, named Waki. Wak? Waki? Yeah. I think it's Waki, because... Because uh, it's supposed to sound like a croak. Yeah, like, uh, Wak is the croak sound in... Romanian. Is the, yeah, is the onomatopoeia. Yeah, so he's Waki. And so Waki finds the goddess of spring, the nature spirit lady. Mother nature. Mother nature. Drinking water from a spring in the ground. Where and she's got these other kids by her. <laughs> these four kids who represent the seasons. Mm-hmm. And mother nature's like, Thank you for your gift, Waki. And he's like, I don't do anything. And she's like, how dare you think you're worth nothing? And then she freezes the pond and leaves. And he's stuck. Yeah, he's stuck with his feet frozen in the pond. Because he doesn't realize he has worth as a frog. Yeah. Which is his whole thing because he's like, every animal has worth, but not a frog. Frogs aren't worth anything. <laughs> I'm sure by the end of the movie, this will be proven wrong. <laughs> So, it's uh, just such a strange, inciting incident. Like, Waki didn't really do anything wrong. He's just like, I don't think I do anything good. Well, and at the very least, even if you could say, like, I don't know, Waki's just kind of a buzzkill and, and a downer, then why the hell does she, like, punish him by essentially... If you're use useless, then die! Then die, then perish! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but like the, the 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 mother nature is not seen as a malevolent force. No, no, of course not. She's teaching him a lesson because she's good or whatever. You're right, because he did a bad, and it's like okay. Anyways, along come the two children, Maria and Mirabella. Their sisters. Maria is kind, and traditionally gir feminine, girly, and nice. And wears a dress and has long hair. And pigtails. Mirabella is brazen and a tomboy and rude and doesn't give a shit about frogs. <laughs> 
Mirabella is obviously the correct choice. <laughs> In favorite character, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Maria instantly wants to help the frog. Mirabella is like, why? It's a frog. Let's go home. <laughs> it looks like it's going to rain. Yeah. So, Maria puts the frog in this the, the cup that the the prince the, the mother nature mother nature was using god why can i not think of words for characters <laughs> so she puts them in this thing so that they have a spot to always have the frog and the kids can always know the frog is in the glass. This turns out to be a disaster for the animation department. Oh, yeah. They can never keep the animated animals on the glass correctly. So, no. like, they wave all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> they try. It was a good idea in theory. But then you gave the glass to hyperactive children who are, like, oh. have to move their whole bodies. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now it's a traveling movie. And we... It rains on them in a very fake way, and they go into a cave. And in the cave, they find a bunch of fireflies. Hey, look, it's the firefly that um, was the firefly from the Fireflies that beginning. all have really big feet. Yeah, so the fireflies don't have wings. They have very large feet that glow, and they fly using their feet. Mm -hmm. Except one of them... He catches on fire instead of glow, so he's got an issue as well. So he also needs to go see the wizard. I mean, the goddess. You mean Mother Nature. Yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. So they take him with them as so well. So they're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Mother Nature. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can kind of see where this is going. Mm-hmm. While we're in the cave, Mirabelle is like, I'm done with this shit. I want to go home, so I'm going to get rid of the frog. She steals the glass and yeets it through the cave. <laughs> but then she immediately falls off the, like, platform that she's on. And so she's holding on to the frog who is stuck in a stalactite or what. It's really silly. And then she's saved by her sister. And... But she has a character growth, I guess. She has a character growth, and now she's perfectly fine going on the rest of the adventure. Right. They, they never, like, address it. <laughs> the fact that she just tried to kill a frog and then almost died. Uh-huh. They just kind of move on. Yeah, they're like, all right, well, you're good now. Mm-hmm. Well, good is still <laughs> up in the air because they go to a... The next thing they find is a tree that is being eaten by a billion caterpillars mm -hmm. who are all ugly because they're caterpillars. All right. She steals the princess caterpillar and the king's like, I'll do anything if you don't kill my daughter. <laughs> Good job, Mirabella. And she's like, leave. That's what I want you to do. Leave. <laughs> Get out of here, you ugly caterpillars. So they all leave the tree and they're all very sad. And... Everyone, and Maria's like, why are they sad? And we saved the tree. And they're like, well, now they're going to starve to death. Yeah, we don't have anything to eat. And There's also this really disturbing part where a caterpillar eats through another caterpillar. <sighs> yeah, I was going to skip over that, but okay, yeah, that that's a thing that happened. Look, there's not a whole lot going on for this movie, so I have to point out the really, like, weird shit that came along when it did, because <laughs> this movie's very slow-paced. Mm -hmm. It's not all bad. It has some decent moments of animation, um, and the songs are okay. Yeah. But for the most part, it's just kind of a drag to get through. Yeah. So then uh, Maria suggests that the caterpillars eat pollen or nectar from flowers. And the caterpillars are like, we can't get over there. And then the princess is like, oh, I know how to get over there. We're butterflies. And then she just transforms into a butterfly. That's not how uh, metamorphosis works. Whatever. But, well, that's fine. All right. And then all the other uh, caterpillars also transform, and now they're no longer ugly. They're all hot butterflies. Hot butterflies. Do well, what else am I supposed to say? Like, they're, like, turning... I don't know. It's just the way you said it. It sounds like one of those scammy ads. Hot butterflies in your area. Click now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so they all fly off to find food, but it turns out the princess is scared of flying. Yeah. So she's also coming to see the Mother Nature. 
Yeah, to get some guts. Yeah. <sighs> I'm really bored at this point. And then suddenly Father Time is here, or as the movie, as, as the, uh... Translation. The translation calls him Old Timer. Old Timer, I like that. Uh, because he's an old guy. And now it's midnight, and suddenly they're out of time? Yeah, they, they run into Father Time, or Old Timer, and they're like, oh no. It's Oki. midnight, we're out of time for Owaki. Owaki's dying, because we took too long. And I was like, wait, there's a time limit? This, this is, is the first, the first time, time this has been brought up. Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, I guess you could you could say that, like, because his feet are frozen, like, he's cold, and so he's, like, dying. But, but that's not how actual frogs work. Frogs literally freeze during the winter and stay that way all winter, and then they unfreeze in the spring, and then they're fine. Bizarre. But, I mean, even still, it's just like, okay, you should have brought this up sooner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not realize we were on a time limit. So... Maria and Mirabelle are like, hey, Father Time, you should to or like actually Mirabelle is like very proactive now. Yeah. Like she's the one doing everything. Oh yeah. She is like, Father Time, stop time so that we can get to the goddess in time. He's like, uh no. Absolutely not. I cannot do that. I'm Father Time. Time must keep moving. It cannot stop. Mm -hmm. And so they trick him into singing a lullaby or something to himself, and he puts himself to sleep. Yeah. Which pauses time. But he fell asleep sitting on top of Maria's dress, so Mirabella has to go on by herself. Mm-hmm. And so she goes and finds the goddess, but she's asleep. Everybody's asleep. Everyone's asleep. So she leaves the three animals there, and then she goes back and wakes Father Time back up, and he's like... They're like, oh, thank you. We were going to ask you to stop time, but it's not needed now. Well, and he kind of gives them that, like, knowing old man look. Like, actually, I orchestrated this from the beginning, but I'm doing it this way because I want you to feel empowered or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's that look, you know? Mm -hmm. So they go on to the the Mother Nature, and all of the seasons because they fell asleep touching each other, have given each other fevers and colds and stuff, or something. I think that's what's going on here. Is it? Because, like, uh, spring has a winter cold, and winter has a fever or something. And, like, they're, right. they're all sick. So yeah. she has to go make some tea for the seasons. But the water isn't working. So then In they... their modern-ass kitchen. Yeah, suddenly in a modern <laughs> kitchen, I'm like, wait, what? We're, we were in the middle of, like, a... The forest. <laughs> a, a nature mystical forest. Now we're in a kitchen. <laughs> it's a little jarring. Uh, just a little bit. So the girls are like, we'll fix this. And so they go, they take the teapot to a water thing... And Awaki's like, no, don't drink that water. That water's bad and undrinkable. Drink this one. And I guess this is a known thing about frogs is like they can, they only live in drinkable, potable water. They know when water's bad. But like, how is that different from any other animal that lives in the water? I don't know. But this is apparently the reason that Awaki and frogs are worth something. According to this movie. Uh-huh. So this is his self-worth. Hey, it's just like the Wizard of Oz. He found out that he was worth it without the wizard's help or Mother Nature's help. Uh-huh. And then, now that they have the water, the 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 oven won't start. Or, like, the, the, the stovetop won't start. So the firefly sets himself on fire to start it. <laughs> Which then makes the butterfly frantically fly above him to put the fire out on his foot. Right. To She's save like, him. oh no, you're on fire. And so they all save each other without the need of the goddess's help. But okay, see, a problem with this is that like, yes, okay, the butterfly got guts. Mm -hmm. And the frog learned his self-worth, I guess. The firefly lighting himself on fire is still a problem. Yeah. Just because it has useful applications does not mean his problem has been fixed. 
Oh, it's fixed after this because Mirabella says, I'll get you a pair of nice, shiny shoes that won't catch fire. Right. Like, Mirabella solves his problem. Yeah. But <laughs> even still, it's kind of like the movie realized that it wasn't solving his problem. So yeah. they're like, oh, wait, actually, yes, and we also will do this. So they solve the problem and they get, they all get the tea. Mm-hmm. And then Maria and Mirabella wake up in bed because it was all a dream and the goddess was just their mom because it was Wizard of Oz and everyone from their reality was represented in their dream. But we didn't establish that it was a dream beforehand. So well, we didn't Father Time is also their dad. Yeah, they don't... They, they pull off his wig. It's really funny. And then it just ends in a musical number and the movie's over. Yeah, so it's it's weird. We have a framing device at the beginning oh, where it's the... the animals being like, oh, look, there's our girls. Remember when we did this thing together? And so, like, that's the framing device is they're reminiscing and telling the story. Mm -hmm. But then we end with a completely different framing device that it was it all, was all a, dream. a dream. It's really awkward and uh, very confusing that they would... They did that, like one Pick framing one. one framing device to start and one framing device to end that contradict each other. Yeah. So overall, I think the movie was fine, but I was incredibly bored watching it because I am not the target audience for a children's movie that has a bunch of singing and dancing, and it's also a Wizard of Oz story, and I've never been a fan of Wizard of Oz stories. M they're more okay than Alice in Wonderland stories where things are nonsense for nonsense sake, but like they're I pretty always, low on my list of stories I like to watch. I always think the strongest part of a Wizard of Oz story is the idea that you had the answer to your problem inside you the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think that's a strong aspect of the Wizard of Oz story, but I think it is usually so... Poorly implemented. Poorly implemented and just kind of an afterthought that I don't think I can think of a Wizard of Oz story where I'm like, yeah, that was done really well. What about the original Wizard of Oz? I mean, even in that one, it's like, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> like, like, if I'm going to rewatch the Wizard of Oz, it's probably because I want to listen to the music or see, like, the Wicked Witch of the West do her shit. Not because... I'm the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion figuring out that they had this, the, the stuff to do it the whole time it really moves me. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Anyway, I'll reiterate that this film isn't all bad. The, the decision to make it live action and animated was probably a poor one because I could very easily just see this being a live action film with puppets instead. Mm -hmm. Or I, I wouldn't say I could see this completely as an animated film because the movie obviously did not want to spring for that kind of budget on this. Uh, yeah. But like, I feel like it would have saved them a lot of time and energy to just do this with puppets instead. Mm -hmm. But like, there is some good animated moments the beginning with the the frog like the whole intro sequence is well animated and it's a good enough song like the songs in general are probably the best part that sync up with the animation but overall it's just not great mm -hmm. this was directed by Ion Popsko Guap Guapo dude I don't know yeah. I don't speak Romanian. <laughs> uh, it's a Mold Moldova film and so is Molten film, like you said before. And music was composed by Eugen Doga, who is a fairly celebrated uh, musician. So, you know, he's done a lot of work for film in his country and stuff like that. So I definitely think his work here is probably like the standout stuff, but... Other than that, I don't have really anything else to say about this one. Yeah. Probably skip it. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, you're not gonna die if you watch it, though. <laughs> you always put such, like, extreme... 
things that'll happen to you if you watch this children's film. <laughs> you probably won't die <laughs> sitting down on your sofa watching a children's movie. You never know, they could like swallow a piece of popcorn wrong and choke to death. <laughs> Be careful with popcorn. <laughs> All right, well, how about we move on from this weird story uh -huh. to a different story? Yeah. We're going to watch Peter No Tale from Sweden. Oh, okay. It's about a rabbit. Yeah. What is it with rabbits named Peter? I don't know. Huh. Well, See you then. See ya. Why do you mean up there?